Welcome back, my ninjas, to another Contrast 101. Today we're doing classic metal sisters. Sisters of Battle Adeptus Sororitas. These are the Order of the Ebon Chalice. Their primary colors, like most Sisters of Battle Forces, are black, white, and red. These will be using Black Templar for the armor, Apothecary White for the exterior of the robes and the hair, and Flesh Terror is red for the interior of the robes. A few details here and there. You'll also want a bronze metallic or something like that. And now I'm using a Games Workshop model holder here. And we're going to take this Black Templar and make sure it's well shaken. And we're going to apply a single coat of this over everything that is armor and gun. Uh, you can use these same techniques on any... Uh, color scheme that you're going to be using, but remember that sometimes the gun may be different. Some of the guns have both black and red, or black and white, or red and white parts, depending on the faction you've chosen. Um, or you can actually just paint them a solid color, and that works too. And uh, there's a lot more that could be done to this model to bring it up once we're done. Um, but this is Contrast 101. We're just teaching you how to use the contrast paints and showing you how to get a very quick result, a uh, very easy result, very quickly uh, using these paints. So you can see I'm doing a fairly thick application. Now, I did start, and this is my trick with the black paint. I, I do start with a wet brush. I put the brush in my water. I get it wet. I dry it off with a towel so it's not runny. Um, but it is not a dry brush. It's not fresh out of my brush bucket. And that really helps the black, for whatever reason, uh, self-recess or self-edge uh, highlight a little bit better. It will make the black parts... The super recesses will still be black. The surfaces, and you can probably see some of this while I'm working on the gun right now, uh, the surfaces sometimes are a little bit gray, grayer than maybe they should be. The model still reads as black, don't get me wrong. And in some places, a second coat of Black Templar wouldn't go amiss because it'll really help enhance that. So we really do just want to hit the armor and the gun and the tubing and the piping, and then we're going to come back and we're going to do the other things. Don't be afraid if you get this Black Templar in places it doesn't need to go, you'll be coming up and cleaning things up a little bit. This is a fairly straightforward step. The next thing we will need to do is we will need to make sure this Black Templar has dried. Uh, but we are going in with a fine detail brush and getting the undersuit. Uh, she is wearing power armor and under uh, Adeptus Astartes power armor and Adeptus Sororitas power armor. There's a rubber undersuit, so we got that. Now that this model has had a moment to dry, we're going to come in with white and we're going to clean up the details. Unfortunately here, you can see by this, look at that, that's not the same color. Guys, I sprayed this model. I sprayed this model with Citadel Wraithbone. Um, which is the contrast primer, but I, I didn't grab my bottle of Wraithbone paint, I grabbed my white, and so now I have to go over all of the cloth, anything that I'm correcting, I have to go over all of that surface in white instead of just the parts I'm correcting, because otherwise you'd have two different colors underneath it. And that just wouldn't do, it would not do at all, my friends. Uh, on this model, we are also going to use a new color. We're going to use a little bit of Wildwood, and we're going to use it on the leather, and we're going to use it on the melted gun, and I'll show you where that works and where that comes in in a minute. But now, we're picking up, dry brushing, the shoulder icons. And it's a wet dry brush. This is a very wet dry brush, but you can see how well those shoulder icons show up so you can see where they're at. This Black Templar does a great job of showcasing high detail high detail figures. Um, a lot of people say don't use it on power armor, but I found it worked fantastic on these guys. Uh, it is occasionally problematic on some of the tanks and larger mechs and things like that, but it works just fine on these power armor figures here. Now something I'm going to do, and I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, so I've got my brushes wet enough and I'm holding it high above the figure, so when I brush it, only the very edges touch. But I am going to come back with some Black Templar later, and I'm going to just touch in spots around where I went and basically fix my overzealous whitening uh, the way I fix my overzealous blackening. Um,
And it's okay to go over something multiple times with this white paint if you need to to really show, showcase those details. I want to get that skull on the front. I want to get that line that goes down her armor. There's a piece of trim there. And there's a spot where it's, it doesn't quite work. I get too much. I get way too much on these rivets, and I am going to go back with the black paint and paint in between the rivets, and I am going to paint in between around that line so that it becomes just a line and they become just rivets. I'm also, I got, having, having some problems in this case, so I got a lot of black, or a lot of white where it wasn't supposed to be around the fleur de lis on the knee, and I'll be coming back with a clean, very pointy brush. You can see it here, coming in, and I'm just going around, I'm leaving the white dots where I wanted them. But this gives me the opportunity to add a little bit darker color. So I'm coming around the fleur de lis, very clean, very pointy brush. Nice, sharp point. And look at that, look at that. The Florida de Lis is, it's done. I picked it right back out. I'm able to go back and cover every, all the mistakes I made. Look at that. This paint, paint my friends, it makes things look like something different. Just a little bit of dots here and there, boom, boom, boom. And I fix all my mistakes and that's fantastic. And I show you guys this because I want you to know that it's okay to make mistakes and to fix those mistakes. So now we're going to take the Gilliman Flesh. And I've done another sister battle, and on that other sister battle, I thinned down the Gilliman Flesh. And on this one, I'm not thinning down the Gilliman Flesh. Partly because I want to showcase. Look at that. Look at what it does when you don't thin it down. It looks great. It looks fine. When not my plastic Sisters of Army, or Sisters of Battle Army box arrives, uh, I will be doing mostly helmets, and part of that is just because I think the soldiers should wear helmets. That's kind of my belief. So now we're going to take this wild wood, and we're putting it on the end. And the main reason we're doing that, we could have gone with black, but um, the brasses and the bronzes and gold tones look really good over uh, browns. A wildwood is an excellent brown. It's going to make an excellent brown holster in there. Uh, now, there's not enough real difference on this to really tell and make that much of a difference that I did it over wildwood. You could have done it over black and it would have been fine. Although, I do find when I do side-by-side -side comparison of this one with a figure that I did over black, I do find that I think the brown is just a tad richer. So. I think it's worth doing. It's a little bit of Flesh Terror's red. You could go with Blood Angel's red, but I find when I look at the artwork, for the Sisters of Battle. I find that their reds are darker than many, so I think the Flesh Terror's red really looks more like the red that they're being painted with than the Blood Angel's red, which tends to be a brighter uh, cherry slash candy apple uh, red. And now I'm making sure I'm getting the trim around the robe because I want to showcase that that inner lining is red. Um, and then I'm also painting this uh, Inquisition uh, symbol. I'm, I'm not sure exactly uh, if what its exact term is, but I paint that red as well. Uh, and that's because it was in it was red in one of the pieces of art. So. I have no idea what I'm doing here because I went out of frame. Oh, I painted the two little dots on either side of the skull red. They don't show up particularly well, but I love them. I think they add just that extra little touch. So now we take our Apothecary White, well shaken. Vodka Martini Apothecary White, shaken, not stirred. Shake this sucker up until you can't see any sediment at the bottom of it. And then you take that Apothecary White, and we're going to apply it to the hair. 
and we're going to apply it to the exterior of the robes. And we are not going to necessarily apply it to any of the fleur-de-lis or anything like that. But see it on the hair there. You can see it's already starting to, to soak into those recesses and starting to leave those highlights. The highlights will be pure white. The recesses will be uh, a pale gray. And that really does actually make the hair look white. Um... I think I may end up pulling some of the white out of the hair slightly. But there you go. Now we're ready to take some brass. I believe we're going to take dragon bronze, although you could also take uh, brass casings or any gold, really. Um, and GW makes a brass. I just don't happen to have access to that color right now. Uh, and we're just going to quickly dry brush, whap, 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 across the barrel. And then we're going to get uh, some detail on the gun. And if you needed to pick out any of the other iconography or whatever, this is your chance to do it. Otherwise, you've got a pretty good sister of battle coming up. And look at that. Look at that. That took practically no time. So I think we're doing really well here. Hey ninjas, I want to thank you guys once again for joining us. I had a great time painting this, as I always do. Uh, this sister battle, this classic model, was a lot of fun to paint. It's a very simple color scheme, and I hope you guys were able to learn something from it and had a great time. If you did enjoy this and you like this content, smash that like button below. That really gives me an opportunity to understand what you guys like, what my audience is interested in. Uh, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel so I can continue to produce additional content for you. Uh, beyond that, uh, leave a comment below, talk to me about things you you'd like to see ask me any questions you might have i'm happy to talk happy to help uh, if you do want to support this channel a dollar a month on my patreon never goes amiss that's seven ninjas dot or patreon.com slash seven ninjas and i do appreciate all the effort i have a great time helping you take your armies from gray to great